Well, it's Tuesday again, and I don't know about you, but I need some fresh encouragement from Jesus today. So just praying that this is what will happen to all of us as a church and anyone tuning in. You're more than welcome to join with us. But I just uh, felt led to Luke chapter 18 for this fresh encouragement today. So I'm going to read some of that. We're going to ask for God's help, and then we're going to look at what God says to us together. So Luke chapter 18, going to read from verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town, who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Well, let's pray that God would speak to us. Father, we pray that you would help us to understand this today. We pray that we'd have fresh encouragement to keep calling on you and never to give up, even no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in. Lord Jesus, please pour out your Spirit and help us today, we pray. Amen. So it is amazing how the Holy Spirit guided Luke to write what he wrote, because he writes there, Jesus told his disciples this parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Maybe some of you have been thinking, well, all our work as a church has stopped. We can't have this. Uh, We can't meet as youth groups, we can't have mums and tots, we can't meet to do Bible studies like we used to, we can't meet on a Sunday. Physically, it seems like all our work has stopped. But is that really the most important work? Because we can do so much, but if we don't have Jesus' help in that work, then what will that work really bring about? Surely our most important work has to be to pray, to call on Jesus for the strength and power that we need in any of the other things that we're doing, to make us fruitful and to help us. And Jesus tells this story to make sure that we're encouraged to carry on praying. So if you're wondering, what can I do? I feel like a bit of a spare part in this time. Pray. Ask Jesus for help. Pray, pray, pray. Call on our Father. And this is the encouragement that we need to keep doing that and not to give up. Sometimes it's easy to give up praying. I've prayed a couple of times. You know, now nothing seems to be happening. Well, Jesus tells this story to help you and to help us. And Jesus carefully chooses his words in this parable. So he starts off with this judge. And and he really carefully describes this judge. So you've got this town and there's this judge in charge of this town. But Jesus points out carefully, but he doesn't fear God and he doesn't care about other people. He only cares about himself. So you're already starting to get this picture. Pity anyone who lives in this town. Poor people. Hopefully there's no one in this town who needs any sort of help. And nothing ever goes wrong in their life. Because they're not really going to get it. Because there's this guy who doesn't really care about heaven or God. 
and he only cares about himself. You start to get the picture of this totally self-obsessed guy who's always sort of looking in the mirror, admiring himself, doesn't really care about anyone else's feelings, if they're hurt, never mind, as long as I'm okay, who uses his position of power to, like, get himself ahead, to serve himself. Well, let's hope there's no one in this town who needs help. But, oh, look, there is someone in this town who desperately needs help. There is someone who is, is being attacked, someone who's being pushed down. And it's Jesus, again, carefully chooses his words. There's this lady, and he, he talks about her situation. She's a widow, so she's not really got anyone to protect her, to look out for her, to provide for her. She's not really got any money to come to court or to offer a bribe like other people might do to get like a favourable sort of hearing and a favourable outcome. She's not really able to twist anyone's arm. She's poor. She's vulnerable. She doesn't really have much of a standing in society. Not much influence at all. And maybe so many other people look down on her. Maybe even despise her for a situation. She's largely forgotten. And I think Jesus leaves us there on purpose for a little bit thinking well she doesn't stand a chance does she you got this selfish self-obsessed guy who doesn't care in charge of this town and you've got this lonely widow with no one to care for her no one to provide for her who desperately needs help how is that going to play out there's only one way and then jesus adds in she has to make things worse, she's got this adversary, she's got this enemy who keeps pushing her down, who keeps accusing her, who feels like he's against her all the time, every day, who's wearing her down. It feels so unfair, she's not getting justice and she needs justice. And this person keeps seeming to get the upper hand on her all the time. And this, this enemy, this adversary, is far too strong for her. That's, that's the impression we're given. He's too much for her. She needs help. Well, the end of the story, I think Jesus sort of leads us down this path, isn't it? Surely the end of the story is going to be that this poor, lonely, oppressed widow who has such a terrible enemy that she can't fight off by herself or defend herself against is only going to go home more empty, more pushed down because the person she's dealing with who's got the power to help is too obsessed with himself to even bother with her. And Jesus says, for a while, that is what happens. But, and this is a massive but in the story, she doesn't give up. She will not give up. She keeps coming again and again and again and again and again. You're getting fed up of me saying that. Well, that was the same as the judge. The judge got so worn down and so fed up. He thought to himself, I am totally obsessed and I don't care about God. But for the sake of her leaving me alone, I'm going to get up off my backside and I'm going to make sure she gets justice. What an amazing outcome. This hopeless story that Jesus tells to start with. And yet she gets an amazing answer, an amazing outcome because she keeps coming and coming back to this judge. And, and it, Jesus is saying, can you see what is happening? This lady who's so poor and despised, who has an enemy that's too big for herself, and all the odds are against her, this judge who doesn't care, because of her sheer determination and guts, and like just like wearing this guy down, please help me, please help me, please help me, she eventually gets what she wants. It's like his hard, stony heart is, is suddenly moved for her case, and she gets justice. <laughs> And Jesus is like, if she managed it in her situation, what about you? What about you? Well, let's go back over this story. What situation do we find ourselves in as a church? First of all, the judge. 
the judge in Jesus' story is not meant to picture God. We're, we're, we're meant to pick up on that because he says he's not God-fearing. It's not meant to be a picture of God. It's meant to be the opposite of what God is like. So it's like this lady found herself with this terrible guy in charge. Is that how you find yourself? Not at all. We have an amazing God, a Father in heaven that we can call on, who cares about all the galaxies, all the huge things in the universe, right down to the tiniest thing in our lives, who cares for even the hairs on our head. The judge who's actually in charge of our town, Barry, and our church in Bethel in our lives, is nothing like this judge in the story that Jesus tells. Our God is someone who really cares. Our God is someone who sends his only son to die for us in our helpless state before we were even born. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. God is not willing that any should perish who lavishes love and life on anyone who calls on him and he cares so deeply about every single person and every situation in the whole world world. What an amazing father we have. So Jesus says, ask yourself this question before you give up in prayer. Do you have a judge like the judge in the story? Is the one who's really in charge, is he like that? Not at all. And if you thought thoughts about God like that, you need to change them. That is not who God is. He doesn't just stare in the mirror obsessed with himself and uses his power to, to better himself. That's not what his glory is like. His glory is self-sacrificing, self-giving, emptying himself so that others might be filled, giving up the riches of heaven and lowering himself down to raise you up to everything that he is. Jesus is the image of the Father. They're not different in their desires. They're one and the same. And this is an amazing thing. Jesus says, look who is truly in charge of the universe. He is someone who loves justice. He is someone who loves, full stop. He is someone who cares. Call on him. Look at the lady in the story. The lady sort of pictures the church but not really. Yes, as a church, we are poor in, in and of ourselves. Yes, as a church, we are weak in and of ourselves. But Jesus says, if you think of yourselves as a widow, having no one to love and care and represent you, he says, think again. So the lady doesn't really represent the church. The judge definitely doesn't represent God. The lady doesn't really represent the church because Jesus is using this to show you you're in a much better situation. Are we husbandless as a church? Are we without a husband as a church? No, we have Jesus who cares for all our deepest needs, who provides for all our needs, who looks out for us day and night, who doesn't sleep, who doesn't rest, who intercedes for us, who's always praying for us, who always carries us in our arms. And again, Song of Songs we've been looking at, we can lean on him in the middle of the bleakest wilderness and desert and he sees us through he helps us through every difficulty so we're not in as bad a situation if we know Jesus as that lady was as that poor widow was we have a husband who to care for us we have someone to look out for us so Jesus says again pray don't give up praying. Can you see the amazing situation, the privilege that you're in? You're not orphans. You're not left. You have an amazing father in heaven who cares for you. You have an amazing husband in Jesus who looks out for you and protects you and guides you. So pray like never before, Jesus says. The only person in Jesus' story who represents someone in real life is the adversary, is this enemy who tries to push people down and use them and steal their life away and accuse them day and night. There's only one person that can be. And that's the devil. 
and he is against us in real life. He is too much for us in real life. We can't fight him by ourselves. But with the comfort that we have an amazing judge who loves justice and cares for others more than his own life, an amazing husband who cares for us and provides for us as a church more than his own life, we can come and know his strength and his power against all our enemies, all our adversaries, the devil, the sin that's still in our hearts, our flesh, the old way of life that's still with us. Jesus says, can you see, he is no match, this adversary, for God the Father. He is no match for Jesus. He is no match for the power of the Spirit. He can be ended just by the breath of Jesus' mouth. So Jesus says, listen, listen to the words of this unjust judge. And he says, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. God is not like this judge. Jesus protects us. We have an amazing husband as a church and he says, call on him day and night because there is hope. Jesus has power to help. But Jesus ends with this question. Will he find faith on earth when he comes? When he comes to help us, will he find that trust and faith to keep on calling? So many of us have maybe given up praying. Well, I prayed for a while. I prayed for a little bit. Jesus says, look at the awesome privilege it is to come to your heavenly father, to, to speak about justice against your adversary, to get a right ruling, to get wisdom, to get strength and power. And your intercessor, who's your friend, cries out for you day and night. He says, trust me, keep praying, keep coming again and again and again and again and God will see to it that you get justice and speedily his arm doesn't have to be twisted like this unfair judge he already loves you more than his own life and there's this amazing verse in Isaiah 62 which says this you who call on the Lord give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. What an amazing prayer to pray. Don't give yourselves any rest during this time. Don't give God any rest. Pray that he would establish the church like never before. Pray that he would save souls everywhere in your street, in your family, in this town. Keep praying and don't give up because God cares more in this situation than we ever could. Ask Jesus to give you that faith to keep calling on him and to never give up. Hopefully that's been a fresh encouragement to you today. God bless. See you soon.